Mr. Kipnes, uh, I want I want to take you back to um, your journey from uh, Telcom to starting your firm. Give your story. If you recall, I said that my plan was ultimately to end up in practice. Yes. Yeah. Because I enjoy the practice side of things. Yeah. <laughs> I started in corporate and it was a damn good job. I enjoyed CA. I enjoyed Telcom because it was the other side of what CA was doing. Yeah. I used to think that I was working my ass off in CA until I went into Telcom and I realized there's way more thinking outside the box than needed to be done. It made me a very a much better commercial lawyer than I was yeah. when I was at CA. And and to be a successful lawyer, even if you're in litigation, you must be commercially minded. You must be able to think commercially. Yeah. Otherwise you'll be doing things by rote. There's nothing exceptional about you saying the law says this, you can't do this. That's not what a business wants to hear. Business wants to hear how can I do how can I do this? I don't care what the law says, get me to do it. So, Telcom did that for me. It made me understand um, there are certain decisions taken at a regulatory level, which all decisions actually at a regulatory level always have a commercial impact. So you must think about the commercial imperatives and know how to push back to the regulation, regulation in that regard. Now, I was always going to get, get back into practice, and my, 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 my erstwhile senior, Mr. Joe Duraro, um, you know, has, has told me that, look, I'd be happy to have you back, uh, but I kind of thought, you know, let me try something of my own. Now, my partner Crispin was a partner at Mohammed Rigai um, Advocates, which was an external services provider for CA. That's how we met, and we've known each other over the years. And we kind of decided to set up this practice, and we had our own niches. He had done his things, and um, he'd been in practice throughout, so it was a good thing because I'd not been in practice uh, for quite a while so it helped to have somebody who has been in practice yeah we, you know assume you're already in the monies assume you already have all this stuff you have this space what have a partnership deed drafted that way yeah. don't draft a partnership deed or don't start off and then we'll fill in the gaps as you go along yeah. because that's where people break up especially things to do with money yeah. one of the fundamental things about our firm which i'm absolutely proud of is we agreed money is 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 going to be the responsibility of both of us. Yeah. Every check that leaves that office, every approval for money is countersigned and counterapproved. He does it and I do it. I do it and he does it. Mm. So he's always able to ask, what's that for? Well, it's for this. What is that for? He answers, he tells me. It's, and look, there's nothing wrong with having what you call a you eat what you kill model, which is not a law firm. You eat what you kill is, I open a law firm with Johnson, and we have a law firm called Johnson and Steve Associates. And uh, what happens is we agree on common costs to pay our staff, Kilamutuku, etc. So we contribute X amount at the end of the month, which is fine. But everything else from that money is mine. So you'll find Mutuku's practice, uh, Johnson's practice is thriving. Mm. And I'm hustling, things are not good. Yeah. Then guess what will happen over time? It doesn't always happen, yeah. but guess what will happen over time? I'm not bringing much to the port. I'm not able to pay my share of your salary. Yeah. Johnson is doing everything. The rent, meaning suddenly he's asking himself, Do I need you? What do I need this guy? Yeah. <laughs> do I need this guy? Yeah. Yeah. Or, as is often the case, and there's no, there's, there's no shame in this, it's the reality of life. We are Pelecanine, then one fine day we've been doing business, a couple of hundred million, I mean, a couple of millions, one, two, three. Johnson gets a brief that is life changing, a hundred million worth of a brief. Okay? Gets a brief for 80 million. And when the fees come through, he's wondering, why am I sharing this with Steve? Yeah. Steve has been Kaziaki, one, two, three, middle, and apple. Yeah. Why am I with this guy? He personally could have become. The partnership ends right there. In fact, most partnerships end like that. You get a big, massive brief, mm. and partners start wondering, why am I sharing this? Yeah. We decided we want to build a farm that hopefully will outlive us. Yeah. So structures must, must be in place. Structures must be focused on. Yeah. We decided not to pad our own little lifestyles. Yes. Um, you know, I see my good friend Johnson <laughs> drives a very fancy car, which uh, I'm, I'm not sure I could afford to drive at his age, but I mean, life has changed, man. It's life like is reason, different. God. We, we thank God. We thank God. We thank God. Now, now you're waxing religious, or please? Thank when God. is the last time you told God thank you for, 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 for stuff in your life? Morning, I thank him for um, allowing you to come and be with us. So, um, you know, instead of, you know, you do, you get good briefs that come through. So yeah. instead of walking into the Porsche showroom to go and buy a Porsche, mm. you decide to put it back in the business. You decide to invest in office space. You decide to invest in 
decent stuff in you know all the infrastructure that goes into building a successful law practice. So that's what we set out to do. Um, I left Telcom, he left his firm, we set it up and it is never the easiest thing to set up your own practice. Yeah, yeah. It is don't over romanticize that idea. It is brutal, it is more likely to fail than to succeed. And there's a dime a dozen, not we're eighteen thousand. What 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 is your business proposition? What are you selling, Johnson, that I haven't been selling, that you'll come and take my cake? Yeah. But people believe in themselves. Yeah. But you must have a value proposition that you believe in, but you also must trust the process. Yeah. When you see me driving a somewhat fancy car. Fancy than fast. Somewhat fancy is the operating yeah. one. I remember a George Oraro. George mm -hmm. told me if you do nothing else, just stick with integrity. Pick, take integrity from my family, we learn nothing else. Yeah. Um, there are very many wealthy lawyers in this country, very many. Most of them, most of them have done their time. George Oraro for me is one such, one such lawyer. He's done his time. Uh, if you listen to the story of George Oraro and where he started from, yeah. and how he used to type his pleadings in other people's offices because he didn't have an office, take overnight buses from one part of the country to another, typewriter, typing his pleadings. People don't see George Oraro for that. But he's worked, he's done his time, he's done, his, he's followed the process. You on the other hand, set up your law firm and you want to wear fancy suits that Mutuku makes, you want to drive a fancy car like my friend Johnson, and you're thinking, I have to get there tomorrow. I got mine in employment. <laughs> just, just, so that, just so that we are clear. Just so that we are clear. It doesn't matter who's who's asking how you got it. I don't know, I'm, no, just saying, I'm, I'm just in saying. This town, the record has no. to be stated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I've recently started a farm. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just don't want there to be a mix-up. But Johnson started a farm and then bought a, a fancy, fancy car, car. No, no, and then started it's, it's, dressing in pants. No one is judging and, you. And no, picked, no one is judging you. We don't know some how good you Good habits or bad habits. Yeah. So look, maybe you went. You, I mean, look, maybe you went to did, do, do a contract for Kemsa, and, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with doing contract for Kemsa, right? Yeah. But yeah. young lawyers yeah. are more likely than not to take shortcuts yeah. instead of trusting the process, yeah. instead of building your name, doing your time to get there. I know a young lawyer who I think were five years in practice, uh, a law firm, and this guy got about 8,000 square feet of space in a very reputable building, paid for it in cash. He was two and a half years in practice. Okay, I'm sure there's some work he was doing, mm. some stuff, <laughs> and, and I know a certain place he was in. Well, yeah. It's not a secret, he was, he was in the NYS deal. Yeah. Um, so, you have to pick your course mm. and follow it. Yeah. The more process-based it is, mm. the more likely it lasts longer. Mm. The more likely you will you'll get to a place where you, you're... you're You've mm -hmm. built a reputation for yourself, mm -hmm. and, 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 and I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking unnecessarily much because I'm not trying to offend my seniors who have made their money any which way. Yeah. So it is important for young lawyers to learn to trust the process and to follow the process. So yeah. mm -hmm. we started our law firm. We've done ten years. It was ten years in February, yeah. and this is our tenth year. Yeah. It's been a long slog. It's been a hard slog. It's not been easy, but it's been very fulfilling. I've had the opportunity to join different corporate entities. I've gotten offers from different corporate entities, even outside the country, um, for some fantastic salaries. But no, leave me my practice. Yeah. I will hustle and wake up at night and I'm thinking, wow, we might not pay salaries this month. Yeah. Uh, we need to keep the lights on. Um, this, that, the other, that active thinking. And there's people, lawyers who enjoy corporate, and I think we're all different. But yeah. if you have to get into practice, I think trust the process. I think it also helps to do what Johnson has done, you know. To learn how to run practi a practice and there are certain things which you will not learn if you set out on your own. Yeah. And you can set out on your own. You pass a bar yesterday, first thing you do is set out. And there are lawyers even from back in the day who will tell you they did that. Mm. And I don't know how they did it because you used to have to do two years first, but that's another story for another day. Mm. You learn certain corporate practices which are important to run in the law firm. Because if you set out on your own, you'll run a successful practice. But you'll not have certain corporate structures which are important if you're trying to. This is a corporate entity. Yeah. Johnson Advocates is not Johnson himself. Yeah. So there must be a distinction so that so that you're not running it, the account like, like a like a petty cash, like a kiosk. Mm -hmm. So certain things must be 
must be taken into account. So yes, that's how I got into in, in, into um, into practice. I was eventually going to get there. It's, I still mm. enjoy practice, um, and until I stop enjoying it, I will I will continue doing practice. It takes a while to get certain kinds of clients, and then you must decide what practice you want. We can't all be one kind of lawyer. I was listening to the interview of Brian Muda the other day, and he said, "Look, he represents." individuals you know and uh, you know he doesn't do corporate institutions which is partially true because when i was in ca he was one of our lawyers i mean you know uh, yeah. i want to give evidence in the case <laughs> we're doing. i know other other parastatals he represented but that's neither here nor there yeah maybe he but, was talking about himself now probably he has let them go probably yeah. he let them go yeah. <laughs> but you choose your line yeah you you can you want to be a damn good criminal lawyer and there are many of those you know get into that line and be really 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 good in that yeah. don't try to do too many things um, and and I can't say much about my colleagues. I have different views about how different practices run, and people have views about how we run our practice. But if you choose to be a kind of corporate lawyer, and those are your target clientele, then you have to have those kinds of structures. Because corporate entities require you to have certain structures before they can give you work. But you know, pick your poison. So as I had mentioned, I specialized quite early in my career. So. I have never stepped into court, I keep mentioning that, and many people don't believe it. Uh, but I think because of that, I was able to do so much. Um, I was able to become a partner in, the, in two very big firms at a very young age. Uh, but after interacting with quite a number of other people, there are some who think that when you're training as a lawyer, you should, you should go through the entire spectrum, so that you pick a line that well, you fancy or you're good at. What are your thoughts on that? Both are true. Both views are true. Yeah. For some people, it takes longer to find their niche. And in that case, you might as well take the journey. Go do different things, and that's what we encourage. That's one of the reasons pupillage exists. In our firm, we put the pupils through all the four teams that we have, the practice areas. You go spend a month and a half or two months in one practice area, move to another practice area. Hopefully you'll f find something that you have an interest in, mm -hmm. but also it'll expose you to different areas of, of law. If you already know what you really want to do, and very few people know and have the sustained conviction. You might know, mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to do IP mm -hmm. for a very long time, but I didn't know about technology. Mm -hmm. And when I found myself in tech, I realized, whoa, this is just a godsend. Mm -hmm. So I'd more likely advise even if you really know and are convicted, just try that one, two other things, just to reconfirm your conviction in that area mm -hmm. that you think is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Because then you'll be doing nothing else, you'll just be doing that, and you'd better be interested. Yeah. Uh, but it also helps when you know a little bit about other things. Now, you said I taught you IEL. I remember Professor Migai was taking a sabbatical, um, and there were issues, shortage of lecturers, I think elections were coming in, people had quit, uh, Kina Kindiki were going to politics. And I was asked to teach and I knew a little bit about GATT, actually, I'd actually done GATT law, WTO, etc., uh, which is you know, part of that IEL uh, subset. So I, I got into that and it gave me more insights into international <coughs> economic law, into WTO rules, procedures, etc. So I didn't shy away from the challenge. It has helped in certain areas that, that I work in. We don't do criminal law at our firm, but we've had briefs. We've had a, um, a billion dollar client come to us with a brief which was criminal. Somebody, one of their staff had been charged with certain things. We didn't say no. We went, we did it. Uh, we managed to get the guy out and we moved on. And there's things we learned from that. So, it's important to know a little bit about everything, yeah. even as you focus. Yeah. Uh, to, to add on, on that, I think um, just immediately after I cleared Campo, mm. um, I, I, I had this crazy idea of uh, just going immediately and going by the yeah. So one of the guys I reached out to was um, mm. yeah. just wrote me, what do you think about this? Just first of all, go and uh, see how the practice is. Yeah. Then uh, after that, you can go to because I was, I had this conviction that I, mm. that I only want to do IP. Mm. That's it. You wanted to do a master's in IP. Yeah, I wanted to oh. do a master immediately after campus. Okay. Um, now I've come to realize, uh, well, well, I, 
the process mm. there are a few things that you learn in um, your eyes open a bit mm. and so does your mind mm. right. yeah that help yeah mm. let me ask you are at a point where you interact with the um, senior very many seniors you're at a point where you teach you teach you taught different um, demographics these askers they are younger liberal uh, people surprise you don't consider yourself to be that category <laughs> i'm actually quite sure this is the second time you're saying that so i'm old just, i'm, I'm just old, that I'm old. extremely <laughs> liberal <laughs> Yes. Uh-huh. So w- w- what 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 are some of our tickles having interacted with um, very senior kids and teaching very young people? Tickles in what sense? I'm not sure I understand. What are things you learn? What are things that um, you learn every day? What are things that you observe, you keep you're constantly observing? Okay, um the first thing and most important I think are relationships. You build relationships. Mm-hmm. The fact that I interact with people are teaching university or people who come for people living in a farm they leave they go some place else I'm doing a matter and suddenly i find a person on the other side who i taught ah mwalimu with me you taught me ah excellent excellent it, there's already a platform that we've shared yeah. so it is easier to seek indulgence it is easier to get the other person to bend over slightly more for you because they were your student it's the same thing with my seniors i interact with my seniors um, you know there's a certain level of hopefully they understand me to have been respectful because seniors will not forget mm-hmm. if you are disrespectful to a senior uh, either because of okay if it was ignorance you know that might be forgiven and you move on but you learn from it but if you are disrespectful to your seniors um, let me give an example um if i'm appearing with a certain senior in court and i use certain disrespectful language and and it's a thin line between being disrespectful and you know being loyal but if i disrespect my seniors by lying about something they will not forget and i will not count on that relationship down the line and i may need it suddenly when i'm in desperate need of an adjournment me not my client <laughs> yeah. um i might lose that out when you're negotiating on a certain contract and i need him to persuade his client to concede on a, a couple of other things the most important thing that i'm saying is relationships are everything I've realized that even some of the people I've taught who who I kicked out of class and there was a certain you may feel free to guess who she is I won't tell you who but a certain celebrity personality who I met somewhere not too long ago socially and I remember kicking her out of class because she would I think I found her on Facebook or something but she didn't hate on me she was like oh my god good to meet you I want to buy you a drink and we sat and had a very good chat yeah. And I was actually quite surprised that okay I guess you didn't take that personally and I like that you don't take it personally because it's not personal I'm not trying to prove a point to you yeah. I was I was doing my job and I was trying to do it in the best way I knew how mm. relationships for me are everything yeah. everything so uh, the take home for me is be nice to people and, and I admit sometimes I've not been entirely nice to my students when I'm teaching them either purely out of misplaced understanding of what i want to convey yeah. uh, but i'm happy to apologize and say hey guys what i will not i do not apologize about is the marks that you get people get the marks that they deserve <laughs> i don't i don't go and look for this paper and i mark it and this is johnson this yeah. is that ki- kichwangumu na yule jackson yeah. alipata ni jackson i can't remember what he got because uh-huh. i don't i didn't mark let me give you another example uh-huh. um and this is this is interesting especially because this is going on to uh, social media yeah. one of the students i'm most proud about is a guy called stephen i think he's called stephen mm. he's a speaker in newry county we had a bit of a running mm. in class and uh, he said some pretty and savory things to me mm. about it was one of those things of out of class blah 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 and the things he said were things that you probably shouldn't tell a lecturer Uh, but i understand there was anger there was rage moved on and uh, he didn't qualify to do my exam lst exam i think twice because he didn't have the attendance and if you don't have attendance you do the exam i'm sorry yeah. third time he did it and we mark numbers we don't mark no. <laughs> yeah so i have a problem with mutuku i won't know until i've allocated a mark uh. granted um if i really really wanted to i can go and look for mutuku's name and make sure <laughs> 
I marked his LST paper and he got a B. Now, I could have chosen to mess around with the system and make sure he gets a D or an E for that matter because I was offended by what he told me. Which, which does not is not worth repeating um, repeating on, on, on this on this facility because yeah. I've moved on yeah. but I didn't he got a B mm -hmm. this is a guy who sat for LST the first time on his third attempt because of attendance mm -hmm. and I'm absolutely happy and proud about the things that he's doing and achieving in, in, in Nyeri County so the point to you is it is immoral to go after you on the basis of marks because you gave me a hard time in class. Give me a hard time in class, I'll give you a hard time. You give me a hard time, I've given you a hard time. But once you meet the threshold, you do the classes, you do the exam, mm. that's your mark. Yeah. So I can't be playing God here and saying, this one, <laughs> atajua. <laughs> atajua <laughs> <hariki tu alifanya. laughs> uh, the, and very, there are very, very few, if any, lecturers who do that. Yeah. Lecturers are not vindictive. And I'll tell you something else. Mm -hmm. A lecture will err on the side of caution. I'm marking Mutuku's paper index 002. I'm like, ah, he's one day at Jibu. Yeah, ah. him again. No, no, no. I don't know it's Mutuku. <laughs> uh, he'll err on the side of giving you the mark instead of taking away the mark. Uh, if there's a question you've answered where it's, mm -hmm. it could have gone either way. Yeah. They'll err on the side of giving it to you than mm -hmm. not. Be positive, being more positive than negative. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a lot of rumors and stories about, oh, Alini Agusha, Alini Fanyi. I'm happy to stand on anybody. I've told my students, and I've met students immediately after the results come out, Mwalimu Bala, In fact, there was one guy, I can't remember his name. So one guy told me, Mwalimu Bala, how could you give me a D? Mwalimu, even this exam I told you was easy. I said, oh. I said do you really, no, no, he got a C. You really believe it? You, you believe you should have gotten a B or an A? Yes. I'm like, please, take my advice. Peleka Rimaki. He got a D. He got a D. Yeah. He got a D. That tells you I, mm. in fact, marked more generously than I ought to have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is precisely the point I'm making. So, students misunderstand, but hopefully people don't take it to heart and keep it uh, so personal. Let's meet out there and mm. build a profession. For record, I got B's. Yes. <laughs> Both papers. That was all yours. Yeah. That was all yours. Yeah. Well done. Yes. Well done. yes. Yeah. You got. Yeah. You got. I got. Yeah, he got. Did not I got give indeed. You. I didn't give you. I did not give you. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, let's talk about hiring. And... Uh, of course, I don't know if you'll be biased because you're also on the other side. Mm. Uh, there are lawyers who say the system is churning whereas we do not fit into the workplace. Mm. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? That's from, a hard from, question from, to answer. From both being, uh, from, a lecturer from being a lecturer and, and, and an employer. Yeah. That's a hard question to answer because um, what are you looking for? Mm. Four years ago we realized that Instead of doing hit and miss with employees because you hire a guy, they look good, papers look good, but they come in and the chemistry is all wrong. Mm -hmm. Create a profile. Mm -hmm. Create a profile so that you know the kind of employee you need. So the employee I need is not the employee you need. Mm -hmm. We're looking for different things. And it's not about the paperwork. Mm -hmm. you got a distinction. That's not it. In fact, if you have had more painful experiences and there's somebody we interviewed who was top student alliance alliance material and then went into uni Maisha Kaji enjoy she started failing she was getting passes passes and you were like what's this about and when you listen to the story mm. and she was honest her mm. party I used to party I used to not come for class so you know this lady is bright but mm. what are the lessons you learned through that whole partying lifestyle mm. we're more likely to hire you than a person who came to us with a first class of distinction mm. so I think the, the starting point is the training institutions, the universities, and there's complaints about how you guys are prepared, how we teach you, the course outline, the course material itself, the curriculum. Uh, but I think a lot of mentorship and in the institutions, even as students, is really important. A lot of career guidance is important. But one of the more important things, which is the mandate of the Council of Legal Education and the whole HP program, is to also check your moral side. Mm. There's a certain moral aptitude that you need. There's also a certain aptitude in terms of analytics and logics that you need. I hold to be true that the absolute brightest distinction students don't make for good practitioners, which holds true in every profession because 
you're linear minded more than practically minded mm -hmm. so how do we make sure that we are tempering the theory we are giving you with some practical understanding so that you understand mm -hmm. so the law says one offense to exist there must be mensria mm -hmm. and spheres. but in certain cases there is the act but there is no intention there is a motive where is the place of motive mm -hmm. in other words you get into practice and how the problem comes at you mm. is from the left side but what you are taught is it will come for you this from way you, this way yeah. so all those things need to be taken into account mm. we look for passion if you really really want to be a lawyer mm. it doesn't matter whether you got a distinction or you got a simple pass if the law is in you you really really want to be a lawyer yeah. man will hire you even if you don't have that distinction mm. so I'm, i'm trying to personalize this because the different people who look for different things yeah. but by and large if you're passionate about the law you're more likely to enjoy what you're doing and therefore take the time to be good at it mm. as opposed to doing it for a paycheck mm. i don't want to hire someone for a paycheck even if you have a distinction it won't work for us mm. i can tell those students when i'm in a class environment teaching sometimes that person has such a passion but they're shy I remember a certain lady who I thought who was so shy and I kept telling her you have to speak and she like money I don't speak I've never spoken from first year to third year yeah. and this cannot be the first time I speak I said kwanza sasa ndio utaongea and and she became so good I supervised her I mean I absolutely love that she eventually came out of her cocoon yeah. so you can get that with people who are shy maybe their job their future is not in litigation but there are people who knock down we have a, we have a colleague who just left the firm she's got a scholarship to the uh, New York University School of Law for LLM. Yeah. She didn't like litigation. Yes. Not that she can't do it, she's confident well spoken, but she is good at her craft. Mm. She came to us as a pupil, has been with us three and a half years and we are we are so sad to see her go. Um she did very she was outstanding in her viva. She was outstanding in her ATP classes at School of Law. Crispin saw that said ah yeah, 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 this one this one she's on top of her game. Yeah. So those are the things we kind of look out for. Um it's not about the paperwork, it's not about you know I went to the best university ever. Sometimes the most successful lawyers are the ones who went to you know your low level non Ivy league um, colleges. Mm. Let's follow up. Yeah. So how do you objectively measure passion? Or and there's no personometer. <laughs> there's one there's yeah, one so Kajwan so said. Uh, it's really the questions I'll ask you. Okay. If you tell me like I told you about this lady, she she just used to party in school. Mm -hmm. Then we talk about like that life of party. <laughs> we just talk about you know what was this all about? <laughs> How was this? Yeah. Because you will still you will get certain nuances from what people say. Yeah. In their lives, failures they've had, mistakes they've made, mm -hmm. that will tell you This person is the one I want because they've learned from their mistakes. Yeah. They are acknowledging their mistakes. Yeah. They're not perfect. It is the questions that you ask. Yeah. When you come into the interview room and you know, you will have somebody receive you. Yeah. Uh how did you talk to that person? There's a guy who we interviewed and as far as he was concerned, he was coming to meet Crispin. Who are the rest of you people? Nini nikina nani? You are a lot of arrogant and a lot of Oh, I could have met Just to manage the partners our our tutapatana kodini tutapatana you know you're coming for an interview you yes, can't yeah. you can't you can't be disrespectful yes. to 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 the non professional staff one yeah. of one of uh, the ladies i respect quite a bit she's called Carol mm. one of the interview processes involves or oh, you'd like to have some tea and the jikoni jitengeneze in the kitchen <laughs> you'll meet the tea lady yeah ukiingia pale mwambie nitengeneze chai get me nataka versus always how are you because I'm hey where's the sugar those things tell her about your humane level mm -hmm. about your capacity to deal with i guess non professional stuff yeah. basically your capacity to be a decent person mm -hmm. those things are speak to the kind of chemistry that you're likely to have within the business but yeah. in terms of passion mm -hmm. the way you speak about I mean you can tell I love the law yes, from yes. this whole conversation yes, yes. you can tell I, I really should have gone to the states but no I didn't go there and the first time I went to the states to visit a girl and I was dating I was like so this is the state of the upper too mm -hmm. okay ni ni poor is good life but <laughs> this is what what is what was all about so 
you can tell by talking to somebody yeah. how they refer to the law how, how they chose the course I wanted to do medicine but I thought I'll just do law yeah okay so and they will keep talking yeah. so you can tell yeah. yeah it's not one answer it's how they talk about the career what, 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 what's, your, what's your opinion on uh, the whole thing about social media and how it's affecting uh, the part of our lives yes. it's it's here to stay yeah. we have to deal with it I agree law has traditionally been very conservative um, I still hold certain conservative aspects about law because that's how I was that's trained, but I do not believe mm -hmm. that it can afford to stay that way. Mm -hmm. I, I totally believe that every career has to change and evolve to meet the cultural changes in its time, in its life, in the lifetime that you're living in. Yeah. So, simple example is, there are certain lawyers who are getting into semi-retirement because this whole thing of Teams and Zoom. Uh, no, how now? <laughs> I must stand up. I must stand up and address the court. Yes. I must be seen, you know? Yes. And uh, for the lawyers and law firms who are not adapting to the use of technology in their practice, in yeah. other words, making it literally yeah. the blood of your practice, mm -hmm. you'll be shipped out. And there's, you know, young lawyers who are coming in or who have come in who are like taking this thing like a fish to water. Yeah. So you must adapt. What we cannot change are the rules of decorum that we've evolved over the years. Social media can say what it wants to say, but decorum has to be maintained. Yeah. Because decorum is about respect. Respect is not has nothing to do with being traditional yeah. or being liberal. Yeah. When you're courteous, when you're respectful to someone, yes. then it's a sign of your humaneness, your yeah. decency. Yeah. So I do not believe that because of the entry of social media and the influence of social media in our lives today, including the legal profession, that it takes away the need to be decent. It takes away the need to be human. I have been a victim of that whole cancel culture. You know, somebody sued our firm, went to town with it. Well, what can we say? There was a lot of lies in those pleadings. But were we going to come with our own set of responses in social media and say, she's lying, she's lying? It's fine. Do you? You've already gone to court. Let's, let's try it in court. Let's not try it in the social social domain um, and I think it's very unfortunate that that's what social media has be has become uh, is what is what people are using I think it's very costly as I did tell you earlier I went into doing a research into people whose lives have been altered forever because of that whole cancel culture people who have lost their jobs there are those who genuinely have lost their jobs there are those who genuinely have been exposed for being the dodgy people they are. Yeah. I mean, if you're racist and things like that. But sometimes it was about, it's about just lack of foresight. Yeah. There's once, I confess, I put something out on social media. In fact, it involved my good friend Mugambi Nandi. Mm -hmm. um, I think he was in copy and someone else. And I made a comment about a certain lady, a certain, a certain sort of, um, it wasn't derogatory, it was disrespectful. And she came out swinging. Now, I, I guess I was just ignorant. I, I hit reply, yeah. but of course she stuck on it. You know how it says, a yeah. tweet you were mentioned in. Yeah. Man, she came out swinging. On social media, oh, you guys, you feel you lawyers, then you culture, you think you cultured, and uh, man, she went all out. Mm. My response was, I'm sorry I disrespected you. I, I should not have done this. I please, please, please apologize. I, I, I apologize, please forgive me. Mm. She kept quiet. Ended there. Yeah. I was not going to start engaging. No, there are people who engage like that. They are lawyers, yeah, celebrity yeah, yeah, type yeah. lawyers who will engage and <laughs> take you to town. Yeah. I am not that. Or take each I other am. to town. Or take each other to town, you know? <laughs> they do that a lot. So I think decorum, in concluding, in concluding this point, there is still a place for decorum and respect. You must respect your seniors. I don't care how much you disagree with them. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much you disagree with me, and I'm all for disagreement. But there's a way that you must remain respectful. I certainly think there's no place for lying about your seniors. I mean, why would, or even your juniors, why would I go on social media and lie about um, mm -hmm. Mutuku? Mutuku is this dodgy guy, blah, blah, blah. And it's outright, an outright lie. Okay. And then destroy what upright people in society think about you because of that. I think that's, that, that whole cancel culture, you have to ask yourself whether it's legit. But because it is with us, yeah. mm. for me, I will not go out in social media and um, and try my case or 
I attack people on social media. Yeah. Now, if I have a point, if it's something legal, yeah, we'll go to court yeah. and uh, get it sorted there. So I think we must open up. The profession is opening up, whether we like it or not. Yeah. Yeah. Now, apart from law, apart from the practice of law, yeah. Yeah. what other things do you enjoy? Biking. Uh-huh. I enjoy biking. Mm-hmm. I don't bike as much because, I mean, today is a cold day. I'm just wondering, maybe I should have come with a car, but yeah. I'd not biked for about four weeks and the bike just needed to get on the road and I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, I've been biking since I was a young student in India. I had a motorbike in India. Mm-hmm. Um, although I started riding before I went to India, but on and off, sometimes tea farms, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, but I've been, yeah, so I've been biking for a while. I enjoy biking. It, it, it allows me to just de-stress. I enjoy going to the gym because it clears my mind, it keeps me healthy. Um, I enjoy teaching, um, obviously we've spoken about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, um, I also enjoy family time. So. Uh, now let me ask, I, 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 I told a friend of... Uh, a friend Think of very this. carefully before you ask that question. <laughs> the way you're excited, <laughs> very, very carefully. <laughs> she, 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 she was very excited when I told her, mm-hmm. I'm going to get kitty. Mm-hmm. You're getting kitty? Um, yeah. You, yes, you really. <laughs> how, I'm, I'm looking for the political correct yeah, um, spit it out, question man. for we are gonna asking. Spit it out. Mm. Babes are so obsessed with you. You're telling me. <laughs> see, see, yeah, I'm, I'm passing the message. From, uh, <laughs> I realized this. I realized this when I was in you. When I was, I clearly I need to do that. <laughs> you do something about it. Yeah, they always hey, Captain, hey, Captain, say hey, that mm. call again. Yeah. Yeah. You you must get a lot of. How do you handle it? I think every every man, regardless of whether you look like a stone, <laughs> gets their share of female attention. I don't think there's anything exceptional about it. Mm. The fact that I'll be in university interacting with younger ladies perhaps creates is a is a much more um, a much more uh, an environment where it's easier mm. for it to happen. Yeah. And there's a power relationship. I'm a lecturer. You're you're a student, uh, you're looking up to me, you may look up to me and you might be thinking, oh, I like how he dresses, or I like how he talks, or I like this, that, the other. I mean, I've had interesting stories. I met a certain lady with her husband the other day somewhere and she was telling her husband, this is a guy who used to come to class with his T-shirts, his arms. Man, we had a laugh. I was like, seriously? Really? Okay, so how should I have dressed? So, look, every man gets a fair share of attention. Um, I hope, you know, it's, it's meant to make you feel good, I suppose. Uh, make you realize that okay, am I healthy? Uh, you know, red blooded male, <laughs> so be it. But uh, you know, the question is, you know, should I do something about it just because there are students who are, whether they're students or not, yeah. you know, what do you need to do? So you have to ask yourself many moral questions um, because it's not it's not the right setting for me to go and start engaging with a student um, in that regard. Uh, n- needless to say, um, when I started teaching, I wasn't married, uh, but and which was one of the biggest scares from the faculty, they used to say, you young lecturers, you don't be playing with students yet. Unfortunately, it was actually not the younger lecturers who were doing it. Yeah. Um, so, look, I'm married today, um, and getting attention is, is, I suppose, is good for any man's ego, yeah. uh, but um, how you deal and engage with it um, is really, really important in determining whether you keep a nice, decent, uh, professional relationship or not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any ambitions? Professional? Political, whatever. Any Zero political. Yeah. Zero political. And I don't think I want to work full time ever again in the public sector. Yeah, um, yeah I have no, no interest in politics. But um, I think to continue building a practice that people, that would create an environment for young lawyers to find themselves and enjoy, enjoy the practice of law. Um, mm-hmm. And basically continue teaching and leaving an impression in the minds of, mm-hmm. of students as to how they can form and evolve into mm-hmm. decent lawyers. Um, mm-hmm. I think beyond that, you know, I'd love to see my children grow into decent individuals, whether they do know or not, you know, none, none, none of it. I think last, my last question is uh, balance. How do you achieve balance? Of course, there's so much you're doing now, running a farm, biking once in was it three weeks or four weeks, yeah. uh, the family, and, uh, I don't know if you're in, are you in any boat now? Uh, no, actually, right now I'm not in any board. My last time ended about two, three months, two months ago. Yeah, so people who join board become board members for life. So you got, there's probably one that's coming up at some point. I for life can never be. Yeah. So at some point, when you have all these things going on, how do you achieve balance? Well, um, for starters, one of my lecturers, Eddie Orachier, who's always 
every year he's studying something, some academic something, and asked him, what do Successful lawyer, successful everything, why are you in school? Mm. And he told me one thing, he said, from the time you go home, whatever time you go home, pre-COVID, uh, between the time you go home, when you leave work rather, say from five to 10 or 11 when you sleep, you have about five hours. What do you do those five hours? Most people, you go to your local, sit there and drink the you know, until half the night and then go home. Or you'll go and watch soccer or something. He has chosen to do something with that time. That's when he, he's been studying French, he's been studying economics, he's been doing so many things. I mean, he has a passion for education. Mm. If you want to achieve certain things, then you must know how to just balance your time. Uh, that's why I still enjoy teaching. I don't think I want to stop teaching anytime soon. I still enjoy the practice of law. Uh, I do not want to stop the practice of law. Then there's other things, other responsibilities I have in society. You just need to, you have a calendar. Fit them in one after another. And if it becomes too much, you need to ease off on one or two things. But when you're young, you have more time, you have energy. You will never know how much you can manage without packing your schedule. Because it's also a chance for you if you're doing an LLM or um, if you're doing some private reading to develop on something or you're in a club, you're a biking club. I mean, I used to bike, we used to bike Saturday and Sunday, Kitengela, Nakuru, Naivasha, we used to, I used to enjoy it. That's what you're doing, some of us. Um, you know, do it, go out there, enjoy yourself because you, you only have one life, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but it's about planning. Um, and when you get a family, same thing. It's, it's about planning and how to focus, uh, make sure that, you know, family gets enough time. You know, yeah, I guess that's, that's, that's my two cents on that issue of, of, of balance. Um, parting shot? Find your passion and follow it, man. Mm -hmm. Find your passion and follow it. Yeah. If it is in the law, which is what we'll be talking about, find your passion. I'm passionate about being a lawyer. I'm passionate about being a teacher, which I never imagined um, when, I, when I was in high school or uni that I would teach or that I would enjoy it to the extent that I do. Regardless of how it seems to my students yeah. um, who would be watching this, um, I actually enjoy doing what I do um, as far as that. So find your passion and run with it. It's as simple as that. Right. Thank you very much. Just, Can you just, say just, like, subscribe here or like? I can yeah, you put can it somewhere in the screen. Yeah. 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 Have you sanitized your hands? <laughs> Before coming... But the family already doesn't do litigation much anyway. So. No, I run my profit now. So. Oh, you're yeah. on your own by the... Yeah. Confidence, man. I'm a confidence. Yeah, watch it. You're good to go? That will work as if you've been in practice for <laughs> 15... 20 years. Yeah. No, you, ah, you, ah, you, you know. You know these things. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you want you want to have some tea? No, no. He'll be saying I don't do I don't do black tea. Wear <laughs> <laughs> helmet. Wear <Pay> helmet. <laughs> I'm a lawyer. I like so I like talking. <laughs> I like talking a lot. Yeah, yeah. Sarah. Hey, Johnson. 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 Once you're admitted, yeah. you must be able to tell people, I went to court once. When I was in court, yeah. you must. <laughs> and it gives a certain level of confidence. Go ahead. No, you can do that. Uh, so busy. Hey, you can do that. 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 You can do that. Hey, you can do that. Hey, I swear, if you guys saw yourself, mm. like, me and me, I'm like, you guys are natural at this time. Ay, it is, a, it is not easy. It is trouble. Hey. Mabibi na mabuana, wakubwa na wadogo, tunajua mnapenda ishu yetu. Ndo tunelewe kufanya hivi. Fanya nini? Hit like, hit subscribe. We'll notify you every time we have a new show. Let's have a banter. Every Saturday.